to this. So a spreadsheet is a two-dimensional grid made up of rows and columns. You see sort of in this GIF here, we have a spreadsheet on the left side. Uh, and it's great for tracking a list of items, running calculations. Now Airtable on the left side, or on the, on the right side of this GIF, excuse me, um, is not a spreadsheet. Airtable is not a spreadsheet. It's actually a more powerful solution known as a database. Now, what, what is a database? Now, a database is a tool that specializes in organizing different types of information and relating that information together. That was sort of a mouthful there. It's a tool that specializes in organizing different types of information and relating that information together. And we're gonna jump into and talk about those differences in just a few minutes. Um, but really, why does this difference matter? Well, seeing some great examples, some different workflows, some different spreadsheets you're, you're thinking about, but your workflow is built on information. We've got an applicant, Carla's tracking applicants. Angela it has an, an inquiry form for sales. Nicole has a CRM type spreadsheet. Um, you have multiple updates, review periods. So those workflows are all built on information. And in short, a workflow is made up of important details, people, actions, basically all the steps you need to happen to get the work done, get your work done. Now, some workflows are really simple and straightforward, uh, while others are more dynamic and collaborative. And so as the driver of your workflow, we're really tasked with matching that right tool uh, with your workflow needs. And that's really where Airtable comes in because you can really make a database a powerful solution for your work. And once built, a database can model how your information works and unlock information ways uh, that isn't as easy or isn't as easy or possible with spreadsheets. We're going to talk about some of those differences a little bit later in the session. So I'm really excited to discover uh, that today. Thank you to those that shared some examples. But let's jump into our example, uh, our example workflow. Then we'll dig into the spreadsheet we're importing and we'll see a preview of where we're going. Great. So the first step to a successful import into Airtable is identifying and understanding the different information that you're tracking. So uh, this is going to really inform how you import your information and understand how to build out your database. So as I jump into this example, a furniture store example, um, do I invite you to apply this to your workflow that you have in mind. So our example today is tracking orders, tracking inventory. I've sort of uh, moved my slide here. We're looking at a number of sort of customers, orders, products, manufacturers. So what, what, are, what do these all represent? Well, these represent the different groups of information and in tracking in this workflow. So um, we, we're working in a furniture store. We're um, you know, getting orders from new customers. Um, we have a number of products that we offer. Those products are sourced from manufacturers. And we also want to keep track of that list of all our customers. So these are the distinct lists, the distinct groups in our workflow that are important to stay on top of. So in the chat, we'd love to know, as you're thinking about your workflow, what are those key groups of information that you're tracking? Maybe if it's applicant tracking, maybe you also have uh, the roles that those applicants are applying to. So it's applicants, uh, the, the job, the open positions, uh, maybe the, inter the list of interviewers. So just throwing out some ideas there, but um, thinking about what those major groups are. Let's build on this because this is just the beginning of the story of this workflow. So we also have lots of important details to stay on top of. So looking at this products, just let's zoom in on this products category here we have to stay on top of the name of that product, the ID, the sales price, the cost, and the and maybe an image of that product. So really being able to stay on top of all the key details within each one of these groups gives us um, sort of some clarity, a holistic sense of uh, what falls into one of these categories. So in your workflow, thinking about, all right, I have my key groups. What are those details that I'd like to track? Lastly here, 
let's talk about connection. So uh, this work isn't happening in a silo. For example, our orders. Orders are a combination of a lot of key details. One being the products in that order, as well as the customer that submitted that order. So notice there's a couple lines here drawing from our list of customers and our list of products. So we definitely want to make sure that customers aren't ordering products that are out of stock or when a new customer submits an order that that customer's name is then added to our list of customers. And we're able to really, um, really draw connections, dynamic connections across these key lists. So in your workflow, there's, it's very likely that these connections exist as well. And with a spreadsheet, you know, work can become siloed or static across tabs, while with Airtable, it's really easy to store, connect, and relate information together. So let's dig into it. We've been sort of speaking in the abstract here. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing just for a moment, head over to the spreadsheet that we're going to be diving into and importing. We are in our hub furniture orders and inventory spreadsheet here. Let's walk through the structure of this spreadsheet. Now that you have a nice high level sense of those different attributes, orders, customers, products, uh, manufacturers, and let's get just familiar with how this spreadsheet is structured that we're going to be importing. So this is the hub for tracking everything that keeps our furniture business running. We have five tabs here orders uh, uh, from March, April, and May. And these tabs are structured pretty similarly. So they have um, the order number, the item, the customer name, shipping address, order, uh, date ordered, as well as status. So the only difference between these tabs is the time or the date that these um, items were ordered. Uh, based on the month. Great. We also have a directory here. Now this directory lets us know uh, our, the key contact details for all of our manufacturers. So we have five manufacturers that we source our products. We see uh, that, that this lets us know which products each manufacturer is producing, the contact, their email. And then this is also formatted by the region or the area that these uh, manufacturers are located. Last but not least, we have our product inventory. So this is really where we stay on top of all the products that our, our store offers, the what's in stock, um, the ID of that product, what category does that product fall into, as well as key pricing details such as sales price or cost from the manufacturer, and then the key materials that make up that product. So what if we wanted to know, you know, who our most frequent customer is? Let's jump back to our orders, because that's really where we're tracking customer details. A customer submits an order, they add their name. And um, right now, this is a sort of across each one of these tabs. Like let's, let's focus in on Casey Park. Casey Park submits an order in March. Looks like Casey ordered a Madrid chair. If we hop to April, we see a couple more orders from Casey. So we know that this customer is a fan of our business, but the way that this is currently structured, having each order uh, sort of siloed by these different tabs, might make it a little bit uh, more difficult to easily tease out, understand, extract that information quickly. So that's just one example. What if we wanted to know maybe the most uh, or least popular uh, items that are ordered? Same thing. And again, uh, just using these orders as an example, we'd have to potentially reformat this information uh, to really pull out those trends. So this is where Airtable can help uh, because it organizes your information in a way that's highly accessible, dynamic, allows us a lot of flexibility. So let's jump into Airtable. Now I'm going to head over to Airtable.com. And we are uh, right there at Airtable.com. We see sort of a number of icons here. These 
all represent, each one of these represents a base, which is short for database. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, Airtable is a database. So lots of example uh, bases here, but we uh, have a built out furniture and order inventory base. So we've seen sort of what this looks like in a spreadsheet. Now we're going to jump into this built out base, what we're working towards, and just touch on the high level differences between a spreadsheet and Airtable and really sort of into the details here. Great. So we're in our furniture order inventory base. This has been imported. I want to point out a couple of things. First is that the top of our base, we see four tables. So these might look similar to tabs in a spreadsheet, but they work very differently in that every table contains a list of uh, the uh, one type of information, a single type of information. Uh, so uh, if you look at your products table, you'll see a list of products. Your orders table, list of orders, manufacturers, uh, so you're spotting the trend here, and then customers, a uh, list of customers. And if we hop back to our slide uh, deck just quickly, notice that how we've sort of uh, zoomed out and seen um, you know, each of these different key groups, that's how a database sort of, um, best reads that information, structures that information in a way by organizing it in those key lists across your workflow. So um, sort of on a high level, we have these four key tables. Let's jump into our products table, talk about this a little bit, a little bit more, and talk about how this is uh, different from a spreadsheet. So first key area is that a more visually rich way to represent your information. And if we look at sort of each of these different columns here, these are actually called fields in Airtable. And a field stores custom details related to each record. So the field that really stands out to me, one of my favorites, is a attachment field. So we have our twist side table here. We have our product image. I can actually open this up and say, you know what, can we, can we swap this plant? Something like that, I'm gonna swap that out. And so I can post that comment here, um, right on that attachment, uh, which is pretty great. So with an attachment field, we can store relevant images, video, maybe a PDF uh, directly in our records, preview and download those. Uh, in that specific type of field. But there are other types of fields. So notice sort of these uh, colored tags here. These are select fields. We have a single select field here that lets us sort of tag the category, the type of product that um, this is. So each table has a table tag, et cetera. The materials um, also have that nice tag here, letting us know, you know what type of materials are associated with each product. And I can even go ahead and add you know what, the twist side table has a little bit of brass here. So we're going to add that uh, tag to that material. Great. So some of the visual ways that we can uh, really represent our information. Now we've been looking at this information in what we call a grid view. We know this is a grid view because it has this blue icon here and it um, is one of many different types of views. So we have a grid view. We also have a Kanban style view. Let's jump into that. I have other uh, sort of uh, a number of different views here we're going to hop into. So Kanban view, same information, but instead groups your records into stacks based on a single select. So same details, same chairs, same lighting. Um, but the difference is that it's just looking at this information um, in a different way. Uh, so we might want to customize these cards and adjust the sales, the sales price or show the sales price and the manufacturer price. We could also sort of scroll down here. If we wanted to move uh, products between categories, we could do that. So just a high level on views. Views are just different ways that we can you know, look at, visualize our information um, and a couple of those are grid and Kanban. Now, talked about a visualization. How do we sort of take this to uh, an, an, the next level here? Well, if we look at all products 
um, we're we focus in on this. If we focus in on this categories single select, what if I wanted to just see the chairs? Just wanted to sort of look at just the chairs that we had available in our store. Well, I can sort of toggle this open, and if we take a look at this chairs view, there we go. Notice that this has been sort of filtered down. We see this filter here that's been enabled and where category is chair. Now, you know what? I'm gonna change this. Instead of chairs, I wanna look at tables. So I'm changing that view, filter this to show only tables. So really allows you to drill down into information that matters. It doesn't have to be uh, tables or chairs. It could be priority. It could be um, maybe uh, products above a specific sales price. It's really up to you. So with a filter, you can focus in on a subset of records and it's pulling from that single list. Um, additionally, maybe we want to focus in on our manufacturers and how our manufacturers uh, what manufacturers are producing what. If we hop back to our spreadsheet and look at our product inventory, notice that these are grouped by manufacturer, but we're kind of locked into how this is formatted. Now, in this view here, we've grouped by manufacturer name. Let's see, where is that? Looks like it's already selected. There we go. So um, we can then, oh, I've ungrouped it. Let me regroup it. Awesome. So it allows us to dynamically group that information based on uh, the details that we're tracking in here. So one other area I want to highlight here, and that's going back to those key relationships and mapping relationships between related information. So if we hop back into our spreadsheet and we talked about a little bit earlier, how, you know, how might we know which products are ordered the most or ordered the least. And that could really help us make some key decisions about you know, what we uh, stock up or maybe we need to market a little bit more. And right now, this is just siloed across these different tabs. Well, let's jump back into Airtable, see how maybe we could solve for this. In our products table, we see a list of every product. And actually, I'm just gonna hop to all products a little bit easier to sort of view all of this in um, ungrouped. Now, we also have an orders table. And in our orders table, we've combined all those orders together. So 1 to 20, let's see, 23 here, 22. So um, notice this field here. This is what we call a linked record. So a linked record um, allows us to create a relationship between these two tables in order to share information between them. So I could maybe add another order here, 24. Obviously, you'd want to add all those other key details and then pull in from that list of products. So I just uh, did that a little bit quickly, but selecting this plus sign. I can actually reference that list because we are linking to that product table. One, uh, and so you have that one source of truth, that one list you're pulling in from. Someone just ordered a blue moon sofa, which is great. So uh, if we hop back to products, answer that, that question of which product has been ordered the most. Well, we see here that for twist side table, it lets us know every order that twist side table sort of exists in or has been ordered in. So at a glance, it looks like Madrid chair, Nebula chair are very popular in the chair category, it seems. Um, so, uh, or maybe this, this lamp needs a little bit, um, a little bit more uh, focus, this lighting. So um, lots of possibilities to draw connections. Uh, so with that, you know, we have our spreadsheet here. How do we go from this spreadsheet into what we just walked through. And that's what we're doing here today. Um, we're gonna import one sort of group of information at a time. So we'll start with orders, then we'll move to manufacturers, then jump into customers, and then finally products. So we're gonna bring that in step-by-step step together. And I'll be giving tips and sort of tricks along the way um, as, we, as we dive into this.